Hey what's going on guys so this is going to be a detailed in depth video regarding the sinkholes distraction and diversion which is actually really good to do daily you can do it twice a day for some amazing dungeoneering xp and in this video I'm going to explain all the things that you need to know to get started and get on your way towards that amazing dungeoneering xp and you also get tokens from this so don't need to worry about that. So guys, sinkholes are a distraction and diversion that can be done twice a day and appear after hour increments but under half an hour mark. So basically they will appear at 1.30, 2.30 etc etc all day. And getting there is quite easy as there are free teleport to the location three times a day which is really useful as there's a maximum cap of two times a day. So you all you have to do is teleport to Demonheim and then run west of the rewards trader to a guy named Talsar and then right click him and teleport him. You can teleport to the location before the sinkhole has even appeared and it will tell you how many minutes you have until it it will appear sorry so that's really useful so guys once a sinkhole does appear it doesn't look like a resource dungeon entrance all you have to do is click on it and then you will enter the sinkhole but you won't actually be put into a team unless you've banked all your items and don't worry there is a bank chest in the northwest corner of the sinkhole entry room so you can bank all your items and then you go to the center and then click on the garage or horde stoker and then choose the ready option whereby if there are five or more people they will find you a team automatically and send you in as soon as it can and the best thing to do really for this is to be on world 134 which is official sinkhole world because otherwise it's quite hard to find enough people to start a sinkhole so yeah make sure you're on world 134 and then just wait until you find a team so guys once you enter the sinkhole you can choose any combat style with the equipment on the tables which will automatically equip you with the right weapons but if you are using mage then you will have to select a spell for yourself i generally just go with melee and as soon as you enter the sinkhole there's three seconds before any of the doors can be opened to allow players to choose the correct combat style but it will automatically give you the same combat style that you had in the last sinkhole so that's pretty useful sinkholes do last for a total of six minutes per game after which the players will automatically be teleported into the final room regardless of whether the cap has been reached or not and it's best to go down your own route it's not best to steal other people's route because it ends up being worse off for both of you as you get less totems overall and there's a cap of items in the top left including resources combat and exploratory totems now basically resources are found throughout the dungeon combat totems are found from each kill of the monster and the exploratory totems are found for entering a new room and collecting that totem before anyone else does now resources give 10 points each, exploratory totems give 20 points each, and combat totems give 30 points each. The general tactic is to focus on killing creatures and getting combat totems first for max points, picking up exploratory totems along the way. Now basically in order for you to actually gain points from these totems that you keep in your inventory, the starting room and random rooms throughout the sinkhole will have a bank icon on there, which is basically a sort of sign that in that room you can deposit your items with a special treasure shoot thing. That's actually not very hard to notice. So here you you can deposit your items where you'll be given the points for your xp and shown the rank that you have overall throughout the dungeon anything handed after the max cap which is shown in the top left will not give any contribution points so it will basically be useless make sure not to take too long to bank the items as the cap may be reached and you will lose all the points that you would have gotten if you handed those in before the cap was reached the highest rank in the dungeon usually gets the best reward which is a huge lamp in dungeoneering so you want to try your hardest to get the highest rank and get the most points in the dungeon Hearts can be found throughout the sinkhole when looting chests and killing NPCs. Also some can be given in the final room. There are a total of 11 different cards but only 5 total can be carried including duplicates. Once all the caps are reached, all the players are teleported to the treasure room. Players will be ranked in terms of points, the lowest points getting the first turn and the highest point player getting the last turn. The chest contents are displayed in a table and the top ranked player always receives a huge lamp as a start. The other loots are randomly allocated throughout the chests. Other loots include small lamp, medium lamp a large lamp and extra dungeoneering tokens i know all these lamps are in dungeoneering xp and are not prismatic if you log out you will not get reward but the sinkhole daily will be used up so you can only do one more for that day so what i'm going to be doing right now is quickly going through each of the cards as well as displaying what they look like their names and the effects that they have the beguiling smoke devil scrambles all the chests with random loot if a second devil is played, the loot will return to the original loot before the first smoke devil. The cloning mosquito is a card whereby your chest will become a copy of the ranks below you. If you are 5th rank, it has no effect. If cloning holds docker gear, each player gets a part that they do not already own. The consistent yak is a card where no matter what your chest contains at the end, you will always receive a medium lamp. The preening ibis is a card whereby it adds a piece of the horde stoker outfit, horde stoker ring or the nabi title to your chest. The horde stoker ring will only be added if you have the full horde stoker outfit already. The protecting titan cancels the next effect on your chest. With the smoke devil card being played, this stops all the chests from being affected. 
The reversing phoenix is a card that returns all the chests to the state they were in before the last card was played. The scavenging maker adds a medium lamp to your chest, but all eligible players will receive a randomly generated extra card. If 5 cards are already in possession, no extra cards will be received. The thieving locust trades your chest with the lowest ranked player. It has no effect when used by the lowest ranked player. The trading leech trades your chest with the player one rank below you. It's useless for the lowest ranked player. The whimsical bunyip randomly generates a card and automatically plays it. The trading mantis trades your chest with the player one rank higher than you. If the rank 1 player uses this, it trades with the lowest ranked player. So guys that's all you really need to know to get underway with sinkholes. If you did enjoy this or found it helpful, be sure to comment rate and subscribe to my channel. And also if you need any certain videos being made by me, be sure to put that down in the comments. Peace out.